What's going on, everybody? This is Joe, and I am back for the first of many, as you can see here behind me, Strixhaven pre-release pack openings. In fact, Strixhaven School of Mages, if you will, pre-release pack openings. If you're unaware of how these pre-release packs work, uh, these are specific to the individual colleges on Strixhaven. So today, I will be opening the pre-release pack for the best college, Quandrix. And I say the best, it's it's the one that I identify the most with. If I, if I went to Strixhaven, uh, I would definitely be a Quandrix. That's not really a question. Um, but yeah, uh, I am the person that has opened the most pre-release packs here on YouTube, uh, and I will continue to do so as long as they make them, mainly because I love it, not for the clout or anything, because obviously that's not a thing. We have uh, Zimone on the front here, and inside of it, first of all, we have the uh, Quandrix uh, D20, which is very nice. Hopefully it'll be able to actually focus on it. Maybe there it is. So you can actually see the the symbol, the Quandrix symbol, as the 20. Very, very nice. I'll put that up here. And then the rest, as for the rest of the kit, we have obviously the packs themselves. There are only five, and you'll see why in a moment. Because pre-release packs have six packs, right? Well, we will see in a moment, as I said. First of all, we have the little booklet for Quandrix, if I hold it back here. Uh, I did see online, I love it, hopefully, maybe I'll be able to show it on camera, I'm not exactly sure, otherwise I'll, I'll put it up on our Twitter, you can check the links down in the description box below for our links to our socials, but um, the, the fact that these all go together, we'll see the other ones with the other colleges, uh, and they do go together in, in a form of a collage, which is really, really cool. I appreciate that they did that. There's also the divider, for your uh, deck box, so you can divide your uh, sideboard or the rest of your deck, uh, the rest of what you opened, and your actual deck itself. So that's cool. And uh, again, they're specific to the individual colleges, which is nice. Uh, and then we have our promo, and what looks like the, the arena code is inside of here, sealed, which I find interesting. I guess maybe for people who are opening it on camera, it's nice that they're like not taking it out uh, and running the risk of showing the code. In fact, I'll tilt it for myself. Yes, this is definitely the code for Arena, so that's good. I thought that we were getting two um, promos because our promo foil, Rare, is this blue card in Ingenious Mastery. So I figured because we were Quandrix, that would mean that we would, um, that we would be getting a green card as the other one. But no, uh, it is the Arena code, and I will be giving that away at some point in this video, so stay tuned. So very, very, I love this in foil, by the way, if that was unclear. The new stamp, uh, I guess, I guess it's fine. With the age of the internet, you could easily look up when the pre-release was for Quandrix, um, and so you would know, <clears throat> you know, you know that it's 2021, but you would know the specific date based on that. Um, I, I don't know. I like the idea of being able to see the exact date on there, but look, it's something different. That's probably fine. Um, you know, it's, it's change. And so I don't want to automatically be like, well, I don't like it cause it's new. It's different and it sucks. It, you know, I, I, I think I prefer the date, the full date. Um, but this is, you know, this is fine for now. Um, I think this is a, a fine card, X and three to draw cards and scry to. So, you know, that's nice. Like I said, this will be given away at a certain point in the video. And then, as I mentioned, there are only five regular packs because we have a seated pack, which means we have a pack of cards that is specific to Quandrix, meaning it is only blue and or green. If I can ever open it, we can look at what's inside. There we go. <laughs> okay, so we start with a Quandrix Pledge Mage. Now, I'm hoping that the Pledge Mage, this common, is in the front because we're going to be getting um, some more, uh, the, the like uncommons and the maybe another rare or whatever towards the back. That would be kind of nice. But we have the Pledge Mage here. This is just to make sure that uh, because we picked this college as our pre-release, our particular pre-release pack, that we're actually able to play that college as opposed to just hoping we get those cards in the uh, packs themselves. So we have the Pledge Mage, which is a great card, by the way. We have Quandrix Campus, also very good. 
Fractal Summoning as a lesson, so this would not actually have to go in our deck as long as we have some learn cards, but it could. It could go in your deck. There's no rules against that. Reckless Amplomancer. I like this one. This is actually a lot brighter in person, at least the, the like green swirling magic here, um, than how it is depicted on Arena, which I appreciate. Mage Duel, also much brighter than it appears on Arena, and this card is great. I have lost many a creature to a Mage Duel from an opponent. Frost Trickster is incredible. Really nice cards from the Seeded Pack so far. Expanded Anatomy, classic. So this is uh, a lesson as well. It's a colorless lesson, so these are the ones where, no matter what deck you're in, you could use these. So... Technically, like I said, I, I, I guess I misspoke. I said it was green and or blue. It's just things that can be played in your Quandrix deck if you are green and blue. So this colorless card can absolutely go in there. And again, it can either go in the deck or it can stay in the sideboard if you have learned cards because it is a lesson. We have a Biomathematician. Good card, especially if you have a bunch of fractals, but even if not. Arcane Subtraction, I don't love this one as much, but it is a learn card, so, you know, you may put it in if you need some learn, and there's nothing wrong with that. Symmetry Sage, this is really sweet. This is our first uncommon uh, in this pack. I like this card. Uh, I don't love it, but I like it, uh, and the art is really sick, so... Very nice. We have Snow Day. This is fun. It's six mana, but draw two, discard one, and tap one, two of their things, and they don't untap. Really, really nice. This is always a ice or frost stuff has kind of always been my aesthetic, so I appreciate that regardless, but I think this is a pretty sweet card. Uh, Quandrix Apprentice. So I think this is our first gold card? I mean, Fractal Summoning, I guess. No, and Biomathematician. Never mind. I'm lying to everyone. It's not our first gold card at all. It's our first gold uncommon, but <clears throat> uh, this is a cool card. Uh, Magecraft, you get to get some lands, and then the rest of the stuff goes on the bottom, but you're, like, sifting through your deck and, and thinning it out, and Quandrix um, wants you to ramp a bit, so that is pretty nice. Ooh... Wow, okay, so I was right. It is an actual just, just a pack, um, so it's got, like, a rare or mythic at the back, and our mythic is Kazmina Enigma Sage. Um, very cool. She makes fractals. That's pretty sweet. And she gets to scry. I, the, the first ability of each other Planeswalker we control, having the abilities of the loyalty abilities of Kazmina, will likely not come into play in this particular uh, pre release or this sealed event that we would be doing. But we have a Planeswalker in sealed. That's probably always nice. Look, three mana for a two loyalty plus two to scry one. She doesn't really protect herself unless you're making fractals, but you'd have to make a 1-1 fractal. Although, with biomathematicians and stuff, that's not the worst idea in the world. Um, but there are absolutely games where you will play this, and she will be amazing for you. And there will probably be games where you either can't play her at all, because she won't be protected and she'll just die, or you play her and she just dies. Um, and I, you know what, to be honest, I think that's fine too. She's a 3-mana Planeswalker. Uh, I would always put her in a Quandrix deck regardless because, you know, especially in Sealed. Behind Kazmina, we have an Elemental token, which is really sweet. And a Pest token. I'll have to, ooh, sorry, an Elemental and a Fractal token. I did not know these were double-sided. That is awesome. So we get double-sided tokens. These are always more valuable. Um, you see these, or we see these a lot when we look up for our bundle battles. Bundles are back here. Um, when we do our bundle battles, our finance bundle battles, we're always looking at the list, and it always says, you know, this double-sided token, this double-sided token. So uh, double-sided tokens are very valuable, so it's really nice that they're including them in the pre-release packs now. Really, really appreciate that. So the Elemental Fractal and the Pest Fractal. Okay, I mean, that makes sense for... Um, Oh, and in fact, you know what? I didn't even realize. That makes perfect sense. So the fractals are green-blue. Um, the nice thing with the colleges is the Witherbloom College shares green with Quandrix. So you could splash black if you're playing a Quandrix deck. And if so, you might need some pests. And if not, you might need some fractals. And then the Prismari College shares blue with Quandrix. And so you might need a fractal, but you might also need an elemental, because that's the red-blue. So actually, I, I like that a lot. I'm sure that was on purpose, and if not, I just got really lucky in my explanations here, but that's really, really sweet that these are the double-sided tokens that you get. I really appreciate that. And then we have uh, a stand-in card for the modal double-faced cards. If you get a modal double-faced card, you put this card in your deck if you're not playing sleeved. 
Let's get into the packs, the regular packs themselves. We already have Kazmina and Ingenious Mastery. Um, again, you don't have to play Quandrix, um, but you, based on the seeded pack, they, they try to get you to be able to. So, like, for example, if we're playing Quandrix, even if we're splashing into Witherbloom or Prismari, well, I guess if we're splashing into Prismari. But anyway, the Lorehold Pledge Mage is probably not going to make the deck, but who knows. Square up, on the other hand, absolutely could, especially if you have a lot of Magecraft stuff. Um, the the P Quandrix Apprentice that we saw earlier is an example of a card that benefits from having instants and sorceries in your deck. So here is a square up. Um, it's not the best card in the world, but if you have Fractals, first of all, with a bunch of plus one, plus one counters, this works really well for that. And it's a an instant or a sorcery if you need it. It's an instant, obviously, but it's a spell if you need it for your Magecraft. Prismari Campus, that could help for splashing. Not bad at all. We have a Serpentine Curve for more Fractals. I'm liking this so far. We have an Illustrious Historian, again, splashable. This is not one of the cards that I would be looking to splash necessarily, but it is possible if we really need a card. Leyline Invocation for more Fractals, hell yeah. Uh, a Lash of Malice, so if we're splashing into Witherbloom, this is one of the cards that I would splash. It's a little awkward because it's only one black, so playing it earlier on is better, but um, with your splash color, typically that's not something you would get in the earlier turns necessarily, but still, I would I would put this in if we were in black. It's a very good card, good removal spell. Um, we have a Study Break, which is a nice one. White is kind of something that we wouldn't really be able to play, but still, it's cool. Reject. Look, if you need a counter spell, this is a, a pretty good one. We have Inkling Summoning. So again, um, thankfully it's a lesson. So if we were splashing black, and if we had a learn card that would let us go get this, we could do that. I, I don't see it happening, but on the off chance that we have two of our splash color, um, and we need a flyer, this is not a bad way to get it. From our sideboard, of course. Silver Quill Apprentice, this almost definitely doesn't make it into this particular deck, as long as we are specifically uh, Quandrix. A Dueling Coach, kind of the same thing, and these are both our, our first two uncommons, which is a little unfortunate. And a Storm Kiln Artist, again, sure, if we're splashing for Prismari, but otherwise probably doesn't make it in. And so, I don't know how these packs are laid out, because I know there's Mystical Archive cards and stuff, so I don't know if this is our Rare or Mythic, I assume it is but we'll find out in a second, and then I'll hopefully know, remember for the future. It is. It is our rare in the Biblioplex. Not a terrible card. Um, there is card draw, obviously. We saw with Ingenious Mastery. I mean, there's blue in Quandrix, right? So um, this, I could absolutely see this getting in. It's a land. Uh, if we're only two colors, like if we're splashing, putting in a colorless land is probably not my idea of a good time. But if we're not splashing, if we're only Quandrix, and we're two colors, then putting in the Biblioplex is probably not bad. It's um, it's just a land that taps for colorless, but sometimes if you have zero or seven cards in your hand, you can get the benefit of using the ability. So I would, I would at least give it a try. We then have a Divine Gambit as our Mystical Archive card in this pack. This card's not the best regardless, and we're definitely not, you know, like I said, white is the furthest color that we're looking at, so um, that's somewhat appropriate, <laughs> I think. Oh, wow, we got a rare, to, rarer token in the Rowan Scholar of Sparks emblem. Uh, I may or may not have a post up on uh, Reddit from the last set, where I complained about ad cards and the fact that uh, there are tokens that are very expensive. And this is an example of one of the rarer tokens. All of the um, emblems usually are. And um, so it's really nice to be able to have one of these. I appreciate that. Our next pack has uh, Rutha on the front from Prismari. And speaking of Prismari, thanks, Elemental Masterpiece. Um, <laughs> we have Elemental Masterpiece. We have an Excavated Wall. This card is bad. Uh, we have a Rise of Extus. This card is great. We have a Blood Age General. We have a, another Leyline Invocation. Lots of uh, Fractals. Lots of Fractals so far. Crushing Disappointment. A Beaming Defiance. Vortex Runner. This card is great. Again, in Quandrix, when you are trying to ramp, having a card that uh, is unblockable and three power 
when you have eight or more lands is very, very good. Introduction to Prophecy, so it's another colorless lesson, which is really good, because if you have a learn card and you have nothing else to get, you can always get a colorless one, no matter what your uh, mana distribution looks like. We have Rutha, uh, that just seems to be the theme of the pack. We have Rutha Mercurial Artist, really cool. She's uh, The art is a lot darker here than um, than I recall seeing, but the, the magic looks incredible, but uh, like her and the background is like very dark, a lot of shadows on her face. But still, this is a great card. Um, if we're splashing Prismari at all, I would absolutely put Rutha in. She's great. I've, I've, I haven't had occasion to use her yet on Arena, but I've absolutely um, played against her and felt like it was just, you know, um, like I was so far behind the curve when I played against her because she has her her ability. So, and she's a one four. It's just like she's very strong, very very strong card. Spell Satchel. I don't love this one as much. Uh, you know, I like the idea of it, but I, I don't know that I would actually play this card. A little slow. And I Twitch. Again, good, um, but if we're splashing into Witherbloom at all, which, again, we haven't seen anything that pulls us in that direction yet, but um, if we're splashing into Witherbloom at all, you want to play this earlier on, but um, you're not really going to be able to do that if that's your splash, so th this is a tougher sell, I think. Uh, and so our rare or mythic is Sedgemore Witch. Okay. Um, again, if we're in Witherbloom or Witherbloom Quandrix, then this could get in. It's a, a good card, a fine card, but I don't think it pulls us there where we're like, oh my God, we have to splash black. We have to get into, into Witherbloom here. Behind it, we have our mythic blue card from the Mystical Archive in Mind's Desire. It does have Storm. I, I don't know. <laughs> it's going to be hard to evaluate some of these. Um, shuffle your library, exile the top card until the end of turn. You may play that card without paying its mana cost. Okay. I mean, without paying its mana cost is fine. It's six mana. So, you know, you could pay six and get like two one mana cards or like a land and a one mana card. So like it's a little expensive. I guess it depends on what's in your deck. Um, you know, and like if we got like ingenious mastery with that, right. Our, our promo rare, uh, you wouldn't be able to pay X because it's without paying its mana cost. So it's a little awkward. Um, I would have to see, and I would love people's opinions on whether you would, at least based on what we have so far, and then, uh, what we get in the next couple of packs, if you would put this in, it's a mythic in blue. So, in general, it makes me want to say, of course it gets in, but this is a little awkward, I won't lie. So, really sweet to have it, of course. Ne never a complaint in that regard, and the art is sick. These Mystical Archive arts, just, my God, absolutely incredible. And the, the frames, of course. Wow. We also have a foil uncommon in another snow day. I mean, hey, the more snow days, the better, right? I grew up in the northeast of the United States. Um, snow days were fantastic. I loved them. And the this looks pretty sweet in foil. It's not perfect, but the background, like those those background colors are sick. Really, really cool. I like that in foil. I appreciate that. And then we have a spirit token. We probably won't have much occasion to uh, to play this one or to, to have one of these, but hey, we, we own one now, so there's that. We have uh, Dina next from Witherbloom. Dina's cool. We start, speaking of cool, Dina starts with a Quandrix Pledge Mage in her pack. Very nice. We have a Make Your Mark. Again, probably not much occasion to play it, but it is a pretty good card. Stonebound Mentor, definitely not. Biblioplex Assistant. I don't love this one as much. It's fine. Like, if you need a flyer, uh, I, I would put it in. Um, I just don't love, like, putting things on the top of our library, except, you know, if we have, like, a really good instant or sorcery, I guess, but... Another Serpentine Curve. That's pretty good. More Fractals. First day of class. You know, with all these Fractals, I'd really love... Damn it. Uh, I'd really love another Biomathematician. Uh, professor of Zoomancy. So this is a way to make pests in just green. So we can get pests. Who know? And this is a fine card. Four mana for a 4-3. I like it. So I would probably put that in. Unwilling Ingredient. This card's fun. Again, uh, in this particular deck, probably not the best card. But in general, this one's fun. A Guiding Voice, 
Another fractal summoning, very nice. So again, we could have them both in the sideboard for lessons. We could have one and one, um, you know, one in the deck, one in the sideboard. Closing Statement. This is a cool card, but uh, probably not for us, or in fact, definitely not for us. Um, but it is, uh, like I said, a pretty, pretty sweet card, and it's our first uncommon. We have a Practical Research, uh, much more splashable especially since it's five mana and you need one red pip, but it lets you draw four cards and then discard two unless you discard an instant or a sorcery. Pretty, pretty nice. Um, so if we're anywhere near red, I would put this in. Again, this one's closer to pulling us in that direction, but still doesn't do so, I don't think. And a Detention Vortex. One, this card's not good. Two, it's in white. So definitely not. And then our Rare or Mythic is... A Conspiracy Theorist. Once again, I don't think pulls us in the direction of red, uh, and so we're probably not playing this guy. Behind it, our um, Mystical Archive card is another blue card in Whirlwind Denial. Again, if we need counter spells, it goes in um, three mana, and then it's countered, basically counter one card, unless they pay four. You're like, I, I can imagine that you're almost never, especially in Sealed, gonna counter more than one thing with this, although it happens. Uh, and then behind Whirlwind Denial, another one of the uh, replacement cards for a Muddle Double Faced card, or stand-in card for the Muddle Double Faced cards. The the background on these actually looks kind of sweet. Usually, like, I don't pay too much attention to that because it's like, eh, it's one of the, you know, stand-in cards, but still. Really, really nice. I like that. Okay, so it's time uh, for people who are unaware. Uh, we reward and or thank the people who watch our stuff with this. We don't advertise that we do this. We just do it in the videos. If you find it, if you're subscribed and you have the bell rung, you will see these videos as soon as they come out week to week uh, on Mondays. So we thank you for doing that. We thank you for watching anything and everything that we make here. Um, please feel free to check us out on stream Mondays and Fridays, 8 to 10 p.m. Eastern uh, for people that are into magic. On Mondays, we stream arena. On Fridays, we stream video games. Uh, and you should come and check any of those out that you're uh, interested in. We have six uploads a week on this channel and our other channel, Video Games for All. And you should check all our channels, everything you need, down in the description box below. With this code, please don't forget, you can only do one per account on MTG Arena. So if you've already used one of these codes, you will not be able to use this one. So be aware of that. And then we ask, you know, hey, if this one works for you, leave it in the comments. Let folks know that uh, it worked for you so that they uh, save themselves some time. And again, don't forget, we'll be back next week with more. So if you don't get this one, not a big deal. Um, just try to be here early. And if you have that bell rung, you'll get a notification as soon as our video comes out so that you will be able to be one of the first to get access to this code. Thank you sincerely so very much for watching. And we're always open to suggestions, feedback, etc. in the comments down below. Good luck. We have two packs to go. Obviously, we're not done. Um, we have Quintorius on this one. And inside the Quintorius Lorehold pack, we have an exhilarating elocution. This card's great. Not for us, but this card is great. Another, a spiteful squad. Another very good card. Not for us. A silver quilt campus. I wonder if there's a theme. <laughs> is this a seeded pack? What the hell? Uh, there we go. We have an enthusiastic study. It's still not a card that we're playing, but at least it's not silver quill. We have a field trip. This one definitely gets in. Absolutely gets in. We talked about um, wanting ramp. This is ramp. We talked about wanting learn. This is learn. It gets in. No question. I love this card for, for Quandrix specifically, but in general. Uh, unwilling ingredient. Again, another guiding voice. Another arcane subtraction. Again, it's a learn card. Uh, one probably gets in. I don't know about the second. It, it, I guess it depends on what you need and what you don't need. An environmental science is nice. We hadn't gotten one of these yet. This is a very good, um, uh, I was going to say uncommon, no, colorless lesson. Um, and putting it in the Quandrix deck or in the sideboard for the Quandrix deck as like one of the first ones that you get is really good um, because it's just more ramp. So you can make bigger and bigger fractals this way, basically. Another Symmetry Sage uh, is good. Again, more Magecraft. Like, uh, it's, it's a flyer, so hopefully it'll let us get in. Um, it is uh, one mana with, you know, being able to become a 2-2 every time you play an instant or a sorcery. It does mean that you have to play them... Uh, like before combat or during combat. And so it kind of limits when you're uh, best able to play your instants and sorceries, but it could be a blocker as well. Don't forget. So 
there's that. And again, with two of them, uh, at least one gets in, almost certainly. Very nice uncommons here. We have a golden ratio as well. Definitely gets in. Very, very cool. More card draw, and it's uh, pretty cheap. And a Professor of Symbology. I actually like this card. Obviously not for this Quandrix deck, but I like this card as well. Um, it's just a cheap creature that you don't care about trading off after you've played it because you're playing it for the learn. So very, very good. And our Rare or Mythic is a Lorehold Command. Okay. Uh, again, not for us, but I'm, I'm still happy to have a pretty cool card. Um, all the commands are sweet. Um, just nice to have. Really versatile. Um, but this one in particular is probably the worst one that we could have opened um, because it's part white, and that's not great for what we're trying to do. So I guess Silver Quill would also be not a great one to have. And our Mystical Archive card in this pack is... A stone, <laughs> stone Rain. Rude. Uh, we would not be able to play this Stone Rain, but again, we have, you know, Whirlwind Denial, and I'm not going to complain at all about this. Um, stone Rain is fine. The, the more Mystical Archive cards, like individual ones that I can get, the better, just so that, you know, for collecting purposes. Um, the art is still sick, uh, and we will not be using this in this particular deck to destroy lands. Just saying. Behind it, do we have a foil? We do have a foil. We have a foil white card in Defend the Campus, a foil common as well. Um, so again, not for this deck, but good lord, look at that art in foil. That's really sick. I like that a lot. The um, the magic swirling around, there's so much of it too. Very, very cool looking. I like that a lot. Okay. And then behind Defend the Campus, we have a treasure token. These treasures look pretty cool too. All right, so we have one pack remaining. Zimone, appropriately, is on it for Quandrix. And so let's see if she has some stuff for us. If you didn't know, um, I always look for feedback for what kind of a deck people would make. So, um, you know, like what you would put in, what you wouldn't put in. If uh, Especially with these, right? It's probably a Quandrix deck, but would you splash? Would you splash into, um, you know, the Sedgemore Witch so go into Witherbloom as well, or would you go towards Prismari because we got like Rutha uh, or nothing? And uh, I'm kind of leaning towards nothing right now, you know, just keeping it a, a straight Quandrix deck, but I would love people's thoughts. We have a Relic Sloth. This is a cool card. Again, probably not for this. Infused with Vitality, if we do go towards Black, this is a cool card. Very nice. We have a Eureka Moment. Absolutely gets in, no question. Love that. A Heated Debate is a good removal spell, not for this deck necessarily. We have a Spring Main Servin. I thought it was Servine, but I guess it's Servin. Um, anyway, I don't know about this card. I guess if I need a 23rd, it gets in just because it's a it's a creature, but it probably trades down. Like, it gains some life, but um, Witherbloom cares more about that than we do. So, I don't know. This one's a, a hard maybe. We have a Spectre of the Fens. Good card, probably not for us. Ageless Guardian, not a good card, not for us. <laughs> we have a Resculpt. I probably would not play this. I can't imagine the best use for this. Because, um, you know, exiling one of their things to give them a 4-4 four -four is not my idea of a good time. And exiling one of our things to give us a 4-4 four -four, um, would, I guess, work, maybe. Like if we had the um, Professor of Zoomancy that makes the pest and then you exile a pest to make a 4-4, four four, sure, but that's a two-card combo, so you're probably not going to get that very often. I don't know. I don't love it. Uh, a Pigment Storm, good card, not for us. Pest Summoning, um, keep it in the sideboard or for a lesson, and it can be double green, so we can get pests. Okay, so maybe that gives us more of an option of we may be able to make more pests, and so because of that, maybe we can use this Resculpt, but again, kind of a little thin, but we'll see what, you know, how many cards we have for the deck, right? Um, and then you check that, and if you have enough, because we have a, a fair number of learn cards now, um, and so with all of those, if you have enough learn cards and you can play Pest Summoning, or you feel like you can play Pest Summoning, then maybe you put in Resculpt, because then you can turn one of your pests into a 4-4, and that would be great. We have a Brackish Trudge as our first uncommon in this pack. Uh, again, doesn't get in, but would be pretty cool. Uh, Witherbloom Apprentice, still probably not pulling us into that splash, unless we really need it, like we don't have enough um, Quandrix cards to make a full 23. And Ingenious Inspiration almost certainly doesn't get in as well. <clears throat> a fine card, but still. And our Rare or Mythic in this pack, our last one of the kit, is... 
a Strixhaven Stadium, it could get in. I don't love it. Uh, I feel like in this deck, if we're going to be getting in for damage, which means, <clears throat> excuse me, getting point counters on it, then we're probably just winning anyway. Um, so I don't really see this working for us very effectively. Uh, then behind Strixhaven Stadium, we have... Okay, a Claim the Firstborn. So it's an uncommon mystical archive. We're probably not using this either. Cool art, nonetheless. And we have a Fractal Token. Hell yeah, we do. What a cool way to end it, right? Awesome. Uh, anyway, <laughs> and they have the draft archetype lists on the back. So here's a Fractal Token. I like that a lot. Uh, let's leave you looking at... Eh, I guess we can look at two things. Because we got two Mythics, right? We got Kazmina and we got Mind's Desire. One definitely goes in the deck, no question. The other one, I'm not so sure. Um, but I would love to hear your feedback. What do you think? Would you put Mind's Desire in? What did you think of the opening itself? Any and all thoughts that you might have, I would love to hear them down in the comments below. Thank you all sincerely so very much for watching. I do hope everybody enjoyed. Please stay tuned for more of these openings every Monday for the next, I don't know, nine weeks. Um, we've got a lot of these kits to open. I am looking forward to doing uh, to opening each and every one of them. Maybe we'll have a guest star in some of the openings. Who knows? Um, but again, thank you for watching this one. We would love some feedback down in the comments below. Continue to watch the rest of our stuff. Subscribing and ringing the bell helps you and us out quite a bit. We're over 500 subs now, and let's keep that rolling going into the rest of 2021. And for now, from us here at the Geek for All family of channels, I have been Joe. And as we always say, in whichever video of ours you watch next, we will see you all next time. Thanks, everybody.